Art with Miss Strauss. Fifth grade art for October 19th through October 30th. Are you ready for lesson five? Combining ideas, old and new. This week, we're going to talk about things that you probably already know about, like some fall festivals. But maybe we can think about doing those things in a new kind of a way, like Halloween. And it's okay if you don't do these things at your house, but it's important to know about other cultures and people. And I promise this won't get too spooky. We'll also talk about the Mexican Day of the Dead Festival. These holidays happen around the same time of year, but they're definitely not the same thing. Before we get too far, let's talk about setting up your art space. Find a comfortable spot for you and your art materials. Really, the only thing you'll need right now is your school laptop or iPad. In this lesson, I will be using the optional materials. I will be using writing utensils, like a regular pencil, art supplies like colored pencils, crayons, and markers, plain white paper, and possibly some digital drawing tools. Now, this lesson is in two parts. This part is going to be on the computer, but the next time you have art class, you should be in the classroom. Words to know. Concept. Sketch. Pattern. Rhythm. Festival. Concept sketch. A concept sketch is kind of like a rough draft. It's a practice to get your ideas out on paper. Then you take your concept sketch and make a second draft. Every time you do a sketch, it gets better and better. How can you sketch out your ideas of adding new things to old ideas? Maybe we could do some concept sketches of these sugar skulls, but instead of using something more traditional, what if we blended it with new ideas? I wonder how we could do that. What if we put a new spin on an old tradition, like carving pumpkins? What if we carved a different fruit? Could we carve apples? Could we carve some interesting faces into the pumpkins instead of the standard jack-o'-lantern? Think of ways that you can combine old and new ideas together. Do you remember when we talked about color in our lesson about the elements of art? It's okay if you didn't. We did say something about primary colors in that lesson. We said that there were primary colors and there are only three of them. Blue, red, and yellow. When you mix two primary colors together, you get secondary colors. When you mix the primary colors, yellow and blue, you get green. When you mix the primary colors, blue and red, you get purple. When you mix the primary colors, yellow and red, you get the secondary color, orange. Many people from Mexico speak a different language called Spanish. Since we are talking about the Mexican holiday, the Day of the Dead, I thought that we should also see if Senora Alicia could talk to us about different colors in Spanish. Are you ready? Hola, vamos a cantar. Hola, hola, ¿cómo estás? Mira, escucha y entenderás. Hola, hola, ¿cómo estás? Bienvenidos a Arte y Más. Hola, Susana. Hola, señora Alicia. Hola, niños y niñas. Hola means Mira, hello. Escucha y contesta. Tengo pinturas. Son tres colores, ¿verdad? Rojo, the three primary amarillo colors, red, y azul. Yellow, blue. Son los tres colores primarios. Colores primarios. Three primary Voy a colors. mezclar amarillo. Yellow, amarillo, con rojo, red, y ahora tengo el color, sí, New anaranjado, color. muy bien, el color anaranjado. Ahora voy Orange. a mezclar 
amarillo. Yellow. El color amarillo. Yellow. Con el color azul. The color blue. Y tengo entonces el color verde. Muy bien, el color verde. Bien. Very good. The color Ahora green. voy a mezclar el color azul y el color rojo. ¿Verdad? The red. Un poquito de rojo. Y un poquito de azul. And the color blue. Voy a tener otro color. Y este color es el color morado. El color, color purple. morado. Purple. El color morado. Bien. The color purple. Entonces tenemos Good. colores primarios. El color Primary rojo, colors. el color Red. amarillo y el Yellow. color azul. Y los Blue. colores secundarios. Morado. Secondary colors. Anaranjado, Purple, orange, verde. Muy green. Bien. Hopefully you remember our lesson about the elements of art. Pattern is not an element of art, but instead a principle of design. Pattern is when the same combination of shapes and colors and lines are used throughout an area or entire work of art. The same combination is repeated in order. Pattern can be made with shapes. Maybe you've made patterns in art class. Or maybe you've made patterns in math class. A pattern might be green triangle, orange square. Green triangle, orange square. That's an example of a pattern. Rhythm is another principle of design. It is very similar to pattern because shapes, lines, and colors are repeated. However, the combination or repetition of the elements does not have to be in a certain order. Notice that these triangles are used all throughout. However, there is no pattern to the color. This is rhythm. The next word is festival. What do you think that word means? A festival is a day or period of celebration that is often part of a tradition. Not everyone celebrates festivals or holidays, and some people celebrate the same type of holiday or festival in different kinds of ways. It's okay to talk about festivals or holidays that we don't participate in as long as we are being respectful of the other people who do. Now. I don't think that I would call Halloween a festival, but it is a celebration that happens this time of year. This picture shows some Halloween decorations. What do you notice about the colors? Do you notice any secondary colors? I notice orange, purple, and green. These colors are often used together with black as decorations for this holiday. Halloween is one of the oldest holidays, and it is celebrated all around the world. A long time ago in Europe, Halloween costumes were worn as disguises to trick wandering spirits and fairies. Back then, they also believed that jack-o'-lanterns kept the spirits and fairies out of their houses. Halloween falls on October 31st. That's the end of the month. People tell spooky stories, decorate their houses, carve jack-o'-lanterns, get dressed up for trick-or-treating, and eat lots and lots of candy. Mmm, candy. While Halloween and the Day of the Dead may share some similarities, they are definitely not the same thing. What is the Day of the Dead? Hmm, let's find out more. Se quiere a la buena, porque es peligroso querer a la mala. Today, I'm celebrating Día de los Muertos. That's Spanish for the Day of the Dead. 
It is a Mexican holiday where people remember family members and friends who have died. It is celebrated on November 1st and 2nd. Even though you might see a lot of skulls and skeletons, Dia de los Muertos is not meant to be scary. It is a happy celebration. During Dia de los Muertos, families build and decorate beautiful altars called ofrendas. Decorations include pictures of loved ones, water, flowers, foods, and candles. Sugar skulls are made and decorated during the holiday. The sugar skulls can also be eaten. Yum! These people are making papel picados. They're decorations made out of paper and cut into designs. Look at the dancers. They have their faces painted like skeletons. Listen to the happy music. The dancers are wearing colorful dresses. At the end of the festival, there is a candlelit parade to the cemetery to visit the altars. Wow, the altars look different at night with all the candles. It is nice to remember our friends and family even when they're no longer with us. Do you celebrate any holidays? Which holidays do you spend with friends and family? Now that we've talked a little bit about Halloween and the Day of the Dead, Let's think about how those seasonal holidays impact the seasonal art all around us. Thinking about some of the displays and altars that we saw, what do you notice about these details in this altar? Do you notice all of the colors and candles? In its own way, it is like an art installation. Here is another example where they have used flowers, these are marigolds, and seeds, and beans, maybe rice and sugar, and corn, in an interesting way. The sugar skulls used in this festival are very colorful. Did you notice all of those orange flowers? They're in so many of the decorations for the Day of the Dead. These flowers are called marigolds. Marigolds can be orange and yellow, or a combination of both. I have some marigolds growing by my house. Do you have any marigolds growing by where you live? Or maybe you've seen them growing in other places. Now I know it's not the same, but we're back in Schoology in an art course that should look a lot like yours. I'm in the Lesson 5 folder, and underneath the lesson video, there is a folder that says optional extras for lesson five. There's the just for fun sugar skull coloring pages. I'm going to open that and here I can open with Kami and draw directly on the printable pages. Also, I can click here and if I have a printer at home, I can print them out. Luckily for me, I do have a printer and I wanted you to be able to see what these different sugar skulls are like. Now this one already has some on it and there's one that has nothing on it at all that it's just blank. Now that I'm at home, I can either draw directly on this one or just look at them to see what I should draw. So if you're at home and you're looking at your screen, you can open that file and look at these files as an example, and then just draw your own on a blank piece of paper. To make sure mine is big enough, these are pretty big, I'm going to put this right here for reference. To make sure mine is big enough, there we go. I'm going to use my hand as a guide and I'm going to use this dark black charcoal pencil so you can see my drawing. If I just used a regular pencil, you won't be able to see it on the screen. So I'm going to start with a dot on the top of my finger and then a dot right here behind my palm. 
Now I'm going to start, I'm going to make a big oval shape. Think about ways you could combine old things with new. Combining ideas with a concept sketch. Our concept sketch is just a rough draft or quick drawing. Let's see about practicing together some new ideas. Next, I'll show you my concept sketches and how to draw the basic pumpkin. Maybe you could draw a cat in a new kind of way. Be creative and use your imagination. I wanted to show you a couple of different things. The first thing, when I change the light, notice how the shadows change. Ready? Hey Google, turn the lights on. Do you see how the light and shadow changed on these objects? I have another light over here. Let's see if we can change it again. Part of setting up is getting the light just right. Now that's pretty bright, but I don't really like it. Now we have this nice light and shadow on these objects. You may recognize from our video before the marigolds from the Day of the Dead celebration. We have yellow and orange. And also these right here, they're not pumpkins. These are gourds. This is a gourd. This is a gourd. This is a gourd. Maybe you've eaten one of these before. This is called a sp spaghetti squash, butternut squash. These are all examples of gourds. I'm gonna try and set up my still life right like that so you guys can see. And we're gonna look for the shadows and the light, how it hits. Now that I have my pumpkin or gourd, I wonder if I can make a funny face on this something new. You should use light pressure so that if you need to go back and erase, it's easier. Or if you cover it up with a crayon, you won't see it as much. Our paper can be in landscape mode for this drawing. That means that it is long on the top and short on the side. To make some big pumpkins. If I draw a teeny tiny little pumpkin, it, it won't work. I'm going to use my hand as a guide. I'm going to put it right in the middle of the page and I'm going to start with a dot on one side and then I'm going to do a dot on the other. Now I'm not going to push very hard at all because I don't want to see this. That's how big my pumpkin is going to be. That's a halfway point. We're going to take different lines to connect from here to here. We're going to make a curved line. Ready? It's going to make almost like a C shape or a backward C around this way on one side of this line. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other.
We're going to do that again, but this time we're going to go out a little bit further on each side because we need, need to make our pumpkins fat. We like some chubby chubby pumpkins. Ready? Every time I add a line on either side, it makes my pumpkin wider and wider. pumpkin needs a pumpkin stem. We're going to do a line up, a line over, and a line back down. You can continue to add more layers to, you, to your pumpkin. I'm going to stop right there. I need to add the next part to my pumpkin. I'm going to add my, my horizon line is going to be a line that goes all the way across, but not over top of my pumpkin. I'm going to have my horizon line so that I can tell the difference between the background and the foreground. So my horizon line is simply a line that goes all the way across from one side to the other. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight and it doesn't go over top of my pumpkin. It goes behind. I'm going to start here and I'm going to go across and stop. Let me pick my pencil up and go over to the other side about here and continue that line all the way across right to the very edge. I have a table or the earth that my pumpkin is sitting on and maybe the sky or the background here. I want you to notice something about the light. On my pumpkin, I have a light side where the light is shining and a dark side where there's more shadow. I have a lamp right here, that red lamp. I'm going to turn it on. Watch what happens to the pumpkins. It gets very bright on one side and very dark on the other. The light is on this side and the shadow, the dark, is on this side. I'm going to choose a dark color and say that it's going to be on this side and a light color, like a bright yellow, like a sunny yellow, is going to be on this side. So now I have my shadow and my light. My light is here, and so it's gonna shine and it's gonna hit this edge of this pumpkin. Ready? Remember that line that we drew up the middle? I'm gonna stop because I need to stay on this side of my pumpkin and on the opposite is my shadow. Ready? I'm going to stay on this side and follow that contour. I have light and shadow here, but I also need light and shadow here on my pumpkin stem. I'll line up and stop. That stays on this side and then a line up and stop on this side. I have light and shadow here, light and shadow here. I have one more spot to put my shadow, my pumpkin, my real pumpkin, is by this light. The light hits on this side and the light can't go through the pumpkin. That means on this side there's less light, there's shadow. Now, it's not completely black because there's other lights in the room and the windows are here. But on this side is the contrast with bright white, light, and then shadow here. On my shadow side, I'm going to draw the shadow of my pumpkin. I have shadow and light for my pumpkin colors. I'm going to continue coloring this in with my green, purple, and orange crayons. I hope this demo helps you draw pumpkins. That's the end of the lesson for today. Thanks for practicing art with me. Goodbye.